You might think that the global economic meltdown has been a tough call for world leaders, but according to many scientists, there are much bigger problems looming. The big challenges facing us are global warming and where the next sort of energy is going to come from when fossil fuels run out. And those, solu those problems are only going to find solutions with people who have been trained in physics and physics-related engineering. But a trend in schools and universities in the West generally, and the UK in particular, has experts in these fields worried. So you only have to go and look at the figures in university, which are drastically down. And we're underproducing the number of engineers we need by, by several thousand. In the late 80s, about 45,000 people a year took A-level physics. That number is down to about 25,000, 26,000. So it's a huge drop. One possible reason for this could be the stereotypical image that many people have of scientists. Until so recently, I think, it's been seen as esoteric, um, you know, men in white coats fiddling around with test tubes, that kind of stuff. Another possible reason for talented youngsters not entering the science and engineering fields is that over the last three decades, sectors such as finance and banking have appeared more attractive and financially rewarding. According to British inventor Sir James Dyson, in order to recapture the fascination and interest in science and engineering, youngsters have to be continually encouraged. You look at uh, 10 to 15 year olds, you see a great fascination in, in manufacturing and in engineering and science, which somehow they lose at about the 15 or 16 age. And I have a feeling that teachers and their parents steer them away from anything to do with industry, science or engineering. It is still seen as something more difficult, more popular for boys, and I think we have to start to address that much younger. We have to work with children 9 to 11, perhaps even younger, work with their parents, work with society more generally. Which highlights a major issue facing both schools and universities. But the really big issue around physics anyway in, in schools is the shortage of physics teachers. Increasingly, it seems, physics is being taught by people who are not comfortable with the subject and as a result lack much needed passion to bring it to life. The simple fact is there aren't enough physics graduates to supply the number of physics teachers. It's a cyclical effect which in the long term could severely hurt the economy and prosperity of the US and Europe. I think in the next few years we're going to see the Asian countries getting sharper and cleverer. So that means either we have to be cleverer still or they're just going to take over. One solution could lie in how potential young scientists are educated. <laughs> Projects like Future Morph, launched by the Science Council, may help turn the tide. A website designed to show kids just some of the amazing and unexpected places that studying science, technology, engineering and maths could take them. It's also about having a bit more fun. Um, I think perhaps the science community could certainly have a little bit more humour when it's communicating, so we've tried to inject that into the website. If they haven't early on understood that science and physics is fun, is exciting, can make a really big difference in the world, opens up a wide range of careers when you're older, if they don't appreciate that, then they may not make those choices. It's also believed that universities should offer more attractive science and engineering courses with more hands-on practices than pure study. We all feel that practical work is a big turn-on for people wanting to do science, you know, getting your hands on it. There is, however, some hope that the situation might actually be improved due to the recession, but the scientific community needs to act quickly to grab those smart young minds. I would like to think that if as a result of this crisis, materialism goes slightly out of fashion. We may get a, a, a move in terms of uh, people's ambition. Andrew Taylor, manager of the ISIS at UK's world-leading Rutherford Appleton Laboratory, has already seen signs of this shift. But we were taking very bright minds that we were putting into the city. Actually, it's great to have these very bright minds in science, and some of them are coming back. In all, there has to be a joint effort from governments and the scientific world to educate the new generation. We, we might all be geeks, but actually we're rather clever geeks and we're, we're geeks that the economy is going to rely on. Starting with getting across the importance of being a scientist or an engineer for both the future of our economy and life on Earth. What I hope happens actually is that the, 
the people we value in society uh, changes because we all like nice things, we all want to earn money. But um, if, if, if the knowledge generators and the scientists and the explorers come back into fashion and become the heroes again, then there will be a silver lining to this crisis.